98 Not Out, sponsored by Shepherd Neem, proud supporters of cricket in Essex. Um, obviously, we're talking about the player resettlement programme, which is a really cool thing. So, um, how come like you first got into it? Obviously, you haven't actually retired yet. So, no. um, yeah, and how no. did it like, first come about? I've always been into the SNC. I tinkered with it a while back uh, when I was at Yorkshire. I did like a course there, like a level three lifting course, and it's something I sort of pride myself on is the fitness side of stuff. And uh, after the World Cup, Sig approached me uh, with a training room, and it was obviously something I want to jump on board with. Mm. Uh, obviously, you can the good thing about obviously the the program that you can do it at your own time. There's no you can schedule your exam when you want to do it. <clears throat> it doesn't get rushed upon you, so you can always delay stuff or you just take your own time. And with the cricket fi fixtures and you're not sure, just say, for instance, if you're with England or you're with Surrey or people might be with Surrey or Surrey second team, you're not sure where you are. Yeah. So you can always just, yeah, you can go at your own pace, which is a real nice, nice thing. And, uh, yeah, to concentrate on stuff other than cricket has it's, it's been nice, to be honest with you. It it's obviously takes the pressure off. And if you can get, I probably should have done it a while ago, maybe looked into doing something, but hopefully this has come at the perfect time. We've still got a few years left playing cricket. Yeah. And still, uh, like a good chunk of this work done and get qualifications. So that's how it, like, I think we got approached by SIG and then we sort of came together and hopefully the the relationship's getting stronger. Uh, that's the kind of thing, like, I was saying to SIG before, people think, oh, you become a professional sports person, then, oh, you're just going to become a commentator or a pundit. And yeah. no one did, you probably, are like, you know, I don't want to talk to any more press or people. You're probably looking at me and like, oh, for God's sake, like, check the watch. You, you know, some people don't want to do that with the rest of their life and continue doing cricket and cricket forever and ever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd, I'm not sure what, what route I want to go. Like, I, I guess for me, like, playing cricket for so long and you're so successful successful in it, that's mm. like your, you know, that's your qualification is cricket, right? So it's people either think, well, I'm going to use what I've learned over the last how many years and add some stuff on it, like the S&C, maybe coaching badges, and then you can become a good asset to someone. Oh, yeah. you're right. Some people might go completely. People might try and work somewhere else, go into the city or do something completely different, go into, uh, I don't know, like catering or electrician or something like that, completely like a second part of their life, just want to do something different. Mm. For me, I've still got a passion for, for cricket, and I feel like even when I don't play, I like to use my knowledge and the skills to give back a bit. Yeah. But, but yeah, absolutely, people do want to, to speak to people and People are not comfortable speaking to people throughout the career, so when it ends, it's like a quite a nice thing. Like I don't have to speak to people; it's just not a natural thing for some people. Mm. Yeah, do you find that sometimes? Like I always think that when I'm watching uh, post-match interviews, so even like after the World Cup, they go like, "So how do you feel?" All I want is a player to turn around and go, "You know what? I feel absolutely rubbish. It's the worst day ever." Can you not yeah. ask stupid questions? I think. You get taught to be yourself a little bit, so like no one wants to hear the robotic answer of yeah, it was a really good day. We need to improve on this, and then yeah. like, people just want to think no, it was a, well, not really swear much, but it, was a, it wasn't a very good day. We need to figure that out. We need to be better than that. We were crap today, and I think that's the best. That's how the public reacts better to that rather than someone saying the same media trained stuff over and over again. Yeah, who do you think? Who of your teammates is like the best at the interviews? Who's one to look forward? Do you think Ollie oh, might put his foot in it? Woody sometimes, Woody's quite fun. Mark Wood's good fun. Uh, it's just because he's honest and it's his character. He doesn't shy away. He's still who he is away from the camera. He still has his like different personalities that he'll project. So, um, obviously you're moving, you've moved to Surrey now from Yorkshire. How come you made the move? Well, initially I wanted to stay at, uh, at Yorkshire, but I was running out of contract and they didn't really offer me a new one. They wanted someone there 12 months of the year. They knew I was going to be with England. Mm -hmm. uh, so pretty much I, I, I said, like, listen, I'll drop a little bit of wage and I'm happy to stay. But when they said, oh, we, we want something here consistently, I was at far and fair enough. And sort of the first team I spoke to. And yeah. obviously they just won the a great club, massive club, but there's facilities are unbelievable and that was the first club I spoke to. I respect Alex Stewart uh, a lot and as I said it was to go from a big club to an even bigger club was obviously I was thrilled with it. Yeah and there's a few England boys there aren't they? The, the current brothers are there aren't they? And Jason Roy? Roy there? Yeah. 
Yeah, your current brothers. Uh, you got Verdi, the spinner. You got Jason Roy. You got Rory Burns. Uh, and obviously now you got you know, obviously well not obviously he's the South African boys, Happy Mamba's side. You got Mone Morkel and it's a big group of players and it's yeah. some good experience and it's something good to be a part of something like that. It'd be nice to win a, a champ or to win a championship at this club. I won it at the last two clubs, but to to play the last few years and try and win something and be, be good. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to miss most from the Northern lads? It's like Yorkshire lads and especially Durham lads is quite close knit. And I, I guess I was expecting a little bit different, but but Surrey is just exactly like that. Maybe because there's loads of northern boys in the dressing room now. You got Mark Storm and Scott Goldberg. Like it's mm. such a different mixture. It's, uh, but they're, they're pretty close. They, they do a lot of good things, especially in this lockdown. I know that we've done a lot more than others. We've uh, they've been arranged for uh, Zoom meetings with we had Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, Sean Peter. Uh, Eddie Jones and th- we do yogas once a week. I'm a person who likes to train, but you don't overtrain like during that period of time. And, and yoga is it is a good workout, but it's not like that taxing on your joints. Yeah. So it's, you you can do it in the hotel room, and it, if you do like a 30 40 minute session, you feel like you're putting some work, but it's recovery as well as like doing some 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 strength and core and stuff like that. Yeah. What's but, your favorite kind of other stuff to do like outside training? I love I, I love the idea of reading a lot, but a lot of the times I read two chapters of a book and then I end up going reading it. So I know that like probably 150 books, I've read like two or three chapters and that's it. It's like yeah, <clears throat> get stuck yeah. in it. Obviously, the studying's taking a lot up. I do quite a bit of that studying now, the S and C side. So I read that kind of book. Like I'm fascinated in that. Uh, so I read a lot of that stuff. Do a lot of the coursework. Uh, when I'm up north, I'll get out on my road bike and do some good miles in that. Uh, that that gives me a, puts me in a good place as well, obviously, keeping fit. But, yeah, I mean, I, I try and keep myself busy in terms of training. I, I try and train twice a day, and then if you've got something on during the day, then your day's done, right? Especially the coursework. So it's train in the morning, coursework through the day, train on the night, and then the, the big chunk of your day's done. Yeah. Uh, and, like, during cricket season, you don't have a lot of time to, to spare, but... A lot of that towards the back end of your career is being smart and recover, be recovery. So, like, can you get to the pool? Can you do your yoga? Can you do your stretches? So it's trying to beat sort of feeling like crap. So do your prehab and then your rehab and there's all that kind of stuff. So it's keep busy. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, are you one of those cyclists in the middle of the road and in the way? I live on, like, a farm lane. And when they get in front of you, it's so annoying they don't move over. So I'm fairly conscious. I know when to, to go. Yeah. And I, if I go, I generally go at a time when it's not busy. Stop it. Right, let's move on from that because that's all. But at least you don't have to wear those kind of outfits to play cricket. No, you don't. Although that World Cup shirt was just great. I've, I've um, dressed my dog up in it for a while. So she wandered around in it and she looked pretty good. I think it's a nice colour. It's uh, yeah. I like the colour. Yeah. Well, you must. You've seen quite a few now. What playing since two thousand five? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's actually um more than half my life. You've been. I can make it old. That's more than half my life. You've been playing for England. That's quite cool. I've seen some shirts. Played in a lot of England different coloured shirts. So especially because the T when the T twenties came along, then there's another different coloured shirt, but. It's one of them ones where you see the people. I think KP had a chair done, and oh, it's so it'd be cool. nice to get all your shirts together at the end of your career and make something out of it. Yeah, yeah. Would you I'm, do not, that? I'm not a person who wants to have loads of memorabilia around my house, but if I could have like, yeah, I'm not like I don't want to put loads of shirts up. Like I might have a World Cup, the World Cup winning shirt up, yeah. but like a lot of the other stuff I'd like to make into something like that. I think it's all the other shirts, isn't it? If you think of like IPL and PSL and yeah. BPL and. Big bash, you're looking at like 25, 30, 35 shirts all in all. So it's, you can make something kind of special. I think. Would you go back to the big bash? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, I, I left because I was with England, but we got beat in the final. Would have been cool to play and try and help win a final. And obviously, nice to have that in the trophy cabinet to win a big bash. But uh, it's quite long, though. It was a really long time. Australia is a great spot and it is a good place, but you still buy yourself a hotel because people might go back to the to the home and have got a week or so. 
yeah. there's still a lot of time by yourself in a hotel room, but Melbourne's a good spot. And as much as I love going out for a coffee and a nice breakfast, it's like the same thing every day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it was long, but the really good people, and I would definitely go back. Yeah. 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 Would you pick any other franchises? Would you do Caribbean? Just depending, uh, as I said, Surrey's priority right now. So it's what can I do to help Surrey win? And uh, I didn't enjoy the Bangladesh over Christmas this time. It, our, our franchise was badly run, to be honest. Mm. Uh, so that just puts a, a downer on it. I know you, you're going because it's the cricket. You, you're going to earn a living, the money-wise, but you give up your family holidays and stuff to turn mm. up there, and it was so unprofessional. So just, yeah. and that was disappointing. Would you say that's the kind of one of the hardest things about um, playing cricket at that level is like having to give up family things? Because like, how long have you been married now? Only what? A couple of two years. years yeah, yeah. Two years. The one thing obviously we're looking forward to is our relationship has been completely different mm-hmm. for the fact that we've only spent like three months of the year with each other. So like for us now, it's going to get fresh in terms of towards the back end of my career the more I'm going to get to spend with her like this winter I wasn't with England so from October through February like I was pretty much based in America so obviously that's really good for the mental health side of it and then with the player resettlement that's going to be really good for people's like post retirement mental health because that's quite a big thing in cricket really isn't it because you're away from a family so long you sort of left with your own thoughts quite a lot even in the field yeah especially people do speak about it more now which is it's huge, right? It shouldn't be. You keep that in, and it'll just spiral and get worse. Maybe you keep yourself busy, and um, it's something I enjoy doing, and I focus on that. So, as much as I want to play cricket for a long time, is to cricket you get excited about doing something. Uh, yeah. As I said, like a, a second or second stage of your sort of your life in terms of what you're going to do, you can get yourself excited for that. You're not going to get the same buzzes playing. Uh, a World Cup final playing England in a, in a test match but how can you find a way of uh, getting some sort of buzz it might be a different feeling but what can you get to make you put yourself in a good mental space uh, so obviously for me it's I've been with my wife and stuff like that and hopefully starting a family is, and then having some direction of being a coach by s and that, that, that sort of thing that excites me so, yeah, yeah that's good because then you've always got a focus of something haven't you and um, that's quite a good way to keep motivated, yeah. really, if you've always got something to do. How do you stay motivated throughout the year when it's sort of off-season and you're just a bit like, all right, okay, here we go, round the wheel again? You've got to think about how your body is. Do I need rest? Do I actually need to get stronger and fitter? Do I two on block, do a rest for a couple of and then get straight back onto it? Can I lose some weight to make sure to see if I can walk quicker? Do I need to get stronger? So try and uh, reassess after like a, a cricket, what I use that time for, as I said, to recover, rest, get out on the bike or, yeah, or just relax and spend time with your family. Yeah, so on the back to the mental health thing, um, I was reading a thing yesterday or this morning, wherever it was, that you, on your debut, show of actor, I said, I'm going to kill you as you came out to bat. Um, how is that a feeling at that age when you're like, oh my God, this is like an all-time great um and I'm about to stand in front of him. He's got like a laugh, like an evil laugh. So he like he said and then laughs and walked away. But I mean, it was already uh, when you face someone in that quick and you debut, I mean, you're gonna be nervous and shooting your pants a little bit anyway. But that was just yeah. I couldn't imagine facing that. No, I mean it's that's the only thing, like, the life threatening side of it. If you if you're not switched on, if you don't practice smart and wear the right stuff, it's yeah. It's, can be true. Yeah, your big game was the World Cup final, really, wasn't it? So, that's, does that feel like forever ago, or sometimes do, does it feel like hardly any time's passed? I think if I'd been involved with England and you've been around the boys, it probably would have felt like not long ago, but no, it, it does seem a long time ago, especially through this three months of the isolation where it's been quiet and it, it feels probably a lot longer than it has been as well. It, not that it feels a year ago, yeah, it definitely feels the time it's been. How would you have felt if they'd asked you to bowl the super over? I think you got, you're prepared to bowl in any situation. You want them special moments to happen. And they're the special ones that live on for forever, right? It's always them uh, quick things on Sky Sports or like the best moments. And 
if you're yeah. your toss and start run out. I find that even when I watch that now, I think that it's not that it's not going to work. Even now, yeah. that run out, I'm like, oh god, he's going to miss field. The thing is with Giro, when he does pick it up, he's so athletic that he was going to pick it up quicker than anyone else in the team. It's him and obviously Stokesy who pick it up quick and release quick. Uh, and that's what he's good at. So as soon as he put it in his hands, I knew that it was going to be a, a, a good throw because he's got a bullet of an arm. Uh, mm. You see these guys day in, day out, and they don't fumble too often. So if they make one mistake, sure. But no, he was he was definitely switched up, and we we backed him to do it. And yeah. Joss did obviously a good job of grabbing it, and then. Uh, was it just mental? What was that feeling like? I mean, I'm, I'm that I'm doing that thing, aren't I? I'm saying that. How does it feel to win the World Cup? <laughs> you can easily say like the generic, like happy this, but for me it was like I was proud. I was proud of achieving that with a bunch of guys. I was proud of winning the World Cup in front of my wife and my family. Yeah. It's like I'm proud to reach that point for all the coaches who helped me. So that was the main thing for me. It was an amazing feeling to win a World Cup for your, for your country. Uh, yeah, it's obviously a massive high. And then people reacted differently. I had like when shortly after, like a wave of emotion hit me. And then people the day after, like uh, I think we got breakfast was watching a video, the the old Instagram clip of Joss knocking the bills off with the Titanic music out in the background. Mm-hmm. I think that hit him then, and people reacted differently. But it was it, it wasn't. Obviously, the uh, the matches were coming up soon, so we had a day, and then it, everyone just. Did, uh, disappeared, right? So it was quite quite sad in that fact that you couldn't sort of sit down and take a breath. It was quick, it was it was quickly done, right? And then, as I said, I was sat on the sofa four days later or five days later, and just watching Netflix in your underpants. That's a massive difference. Who cares anymore? But um, so I am contributing to a radio station as well at the moment called um. Phoenix FM, and there's a show on there called 98 Not Out. It's one of these British ones. Do you ever, when you're outside of playing and stuff, do you ever listen to those kind of things? Or do you just like tend to just zone out and be like, I'm going to, you know, catch up on a Harry Potter audiobook or something? Yeah, I think for me, I'm not a massive cricket watcher. Uh, I feel like I spend so much time at cricket. Uh, and I get even this time in isolation and doing my, and I miss the competition of rocking up and being with a team and, and doing and well and having a battle to fight. Yeah. Uh, but I guess when I've been away, it's been a good chance. What's that, sir? That match day feeling. Yeah. yeah that, that's what I always battle. I, I will I listen to something. We sort of like just bits on Instagram where someone's like replayed something. But all my podcasts would be probably around like your David Goggins people, like Joe Rogan. Uh, like I'm a massive like uh, like fighting man, so boxing, MMA. Like I'm clued yeah. up on all that. And then you got NBA, NFL, like in America, stuff, like America, something I've not grown up with. Uh, that sort of fascinates me a lot. So I sort of tend to listen to that stuff. What do you think? Maybe one day there'll be like proper big on documentaries about the journey of winning the World Cup. How do you feel to be in like a documentary? Because obviously, have you watched? You must. I don't know if you've watched. The test or the edge or whatever on Amazon, but maybe there'll be one about the trip to World Cup. I just missed the table. If you saw that, <laughs> I think you know. I think we were uh, someone was approached, but I'm not sure if someone wanted to do it. I think Netflix might have approached England like three years before. Okay. And that would have been an epic, like to watch. Them. But I'm not sure who doesn't agree with it. But I'm sure they can do could do a really good documentary on it. Uh, especially if you gather all the footage over the last few years, do like the, the road to the World Cup. I think that would go down really well to get yeah. an insight of being away in India and Bangladesh and traveling and this, this and this and how the guys have improved the fitness, how people have sort of <coughs> changed the way we play the game. That, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that would be an amazing documentary because you know well, a lot of people watching it know the end result of the World Cup win. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although I'd probably still be watching it being like, oh God, is it going to happen? You know, but I mean, not just because I'm a loser. Yeah. So um, if you hadn't gone into cricket, what kind of thing would you do? I'm not sure. Maybe it'd be something to do activity wise. Like I'm not sure I would have tried to get into something like triathlon and stuff. I'm not sure how I would have went, but I like to push myself in that sort of way. Uh, maybe down like a teacher route in terms of like a sports, like a 
Mm. Not like a main PE teacher or something. I don't bet I was going to play cricket. That that was the only thing I ever thought about. Uh, yeah. You have a dream of playing football and stuff like that, but cricket was so overpowering, and that's that was just me. I, I love cricket, and that's all I thought about and wanted to do. Yeah. So, um, would you see yourself, you you know, into a triathlon fitness? Would you see yourself doing something like an Ironman? I think I want to do that after. I know it takes a while to train for that. I'm not stupid enough to think, oh, I'm just going to finish and go and hang it out in a few months' time. Yeah. I, I love to put in time and have that year or so training, have a good year of training and do the, the smaller events to, to do, like an Ironman. I'd love to do that, yeah. Yeah, you can start with the half, the half Ironman and then just work up to that. I'm pretty sure you can do that. I'd love to do it for charity as well. I'd love to do the cycling across the states. I know a few people have done that, and it'd be nice to get some group of people together to do it for charities and stuff. But that'd be a really good challenge to do in a route through the states. Yeah, there you go. That can be a documentary. I'll run it for you. Perfect. Sounds good.